Hi there, in the first lecture I talked about the definition of nanotechnology. In this video I'll try to show you how much nanoscale is small. We'll see how the nano world would look like actually. Let's start with some intuitive facts and comparisons. Consider a ruler that you may have at your home. The smallest unit shown on a ruler is 1 millimeter. 1 nanometer is actually 1 million times smaller than the smallest unit that you can see on that ruler. Yes, one nanometer is one billionth of a meter, if you like to say. As a matter of the fact, human fingernail grows one nanometer in every second. Thickness of human hair is somewhat around 50 to 100 micrometers. This means that 100 nanometers, the upper limit of nanoscale, is around like a thousand times smaller than the human hair thickness. Ten hydrogen atoms laid side by side reach the seven nanometer long. DNA strand has the width of 2-3 nanometers. Even red blood cell that may be counted as a very small thing in your mind has the width of like 7,000 nanometers. Let's put it in another way. We have all some sense about the dimensions of daily objects, right? Like the glass, like a ball. For the sake of comparison, the ratio of Earth to a ball is almost equal to the ratio of that ball to some nanoparticles like fullerene. In this picture, dimensions of some objects have been illustrated in nanometer units, like a tennis ball with a dimension of 100 million nanometers, cancer cell, 10,000 of nanometers, the bacteria and the virus. Yes, the virus, an organism known to be very hard to observe and defeat, uh, stands at the upper border of nanovolt. That's surprising. At the lower limit of nanovolt, around 1 nanometer, we would observe things like glucose which is a big molecule actually. So when we say nano world, we are talking about a variety of super small things like chemical big molecules, nanoparticles like quantum dots, and even bioorganisms like a virus. Fair enough, I guess now you have a milestone about nanoscale and how much it is relatively small. But guys, I'd like to mention you, it's not just a matter of the size actually, but also the world at the nanoscale and even microscale look totally different from the daily life objects. Even the physics principles that govern the small size is very different. I'll talk about the rules and principles of nano world in the future lessons, but for now, let's find out how nano world look like by mean of some examples. Thanks to the advanced microscopy systems, we can disclose the nano world now. Here I show you a series of pictures of an ant and I bet you have never seen an ant as you're gonna see here in these pictures. This one, ant's picture has just been magnified. Second image, the length of this white bar is like 200 micrometers, so you have the scale. And next, the white bar is equal to 50 microns and it's like that the ant has some fluffy fur on its skin and just look at the eye structure. And then 20 micrometers. Now we can observe the detail we could not disclose by our naked eyes. And finally, an unsmiling ant looks like he knew some people are taking images of him. Okay, these images were just at the micrometers. Let's go through some other examples. What about the surface of a leaf, like the waterproof lettuce leaf? Here, macro, micro, and then nanoscale. At the nanoscale, it's more like a bunch of worms than the soft leaf surface. Another example is the steel mold. So as you see, when we go down in dimensions, we get very different look and the structural formats. Like at the nano level, there are arrays of pillar things, which is totally different from the smooth and shiny surface of a metal at the top level. So it somehow manifests that the potentials of nanotechnology as well. Because just imagine someone is able to control matter at the nano levels. Since nanoscale is the very, very base level, the people may come up with very inspiring features and characteristics at the top level if they are able to control matter at the nanoscale. I also recommend you to do some search and find the pictures of the world at the nanoscale. Here I am at the website of the Joule, and that's a company, uh, you know, uh, delivering the products of the microscopy, make scientists capable of seeing and measurements at the micro and nano level. And here they have a very nice collection of the surface of different objects at the nano scale. And I believe some of them, uh, some of these pictures are not at the nano scale, maybe micro level, but it's still worse to look at them. And it's going to give us a very, uh, you know, intuitive uh, vision of what we see at the very bottom layer like here i have the surface of the mayonnaise and here the blue cheese and here a printed board and this one is like the some kind of coated paper 
but <laughs> at the first glance it's like uh, some rocks and stones but nothing like a paper and uh, like here silver particles yes uh, like the ceramic like uh, different kind of objects that you find here and uh, you're gonna see that uh, the world at the very bottom it's kind of different. It's very nice to find these kind of pictures and think about how such worlds gonna work and how is the mechanism of working of that world. I put the links of this website and this page for you and also some other beneficial links uh, to discover after this lecture actually for you. Briefly speaking, nano things could be natural or man-made. Very known example of man-made nanos are nano-electronic devices and sensors. Like nano-sensors compared to conventional sensors present much higher level of sensitivity. They could be capable of detection of even few numbers of target molecules in a very small sample. And also nano-devices like novel carbon-based transistors or single electron transistors. These are promising potential candidates for future electronic industry to be replaced by conventional silicon technology. I'll talk about in this regard more in the future lectures, but the point for this lecture is how much nanoscale is small and the fact that technological advancements have been opening our hands to disclose nano world and then manipulate at the atomic level to make nanoscale tools and systems. Very tiny man-made nanos that can be the foundation of the systems at the micro level. Hope you have better sense of nano world and what we find out when we go very small. See you in the next lesson.